Hello and welcome back. It's Puzzle Time with Sudoku Sleuth and today we are playing Driving Me Dotty which um, I actually had to look up because I've never really came across this term before. Dotty being slightly mad or I guess slightly crazy and likely to do odd and unusual things. Um, speaking from personal experience, driving around London, yep, definitely drives me dotty and this is kind of why you see this in the puzzle today in this thumbnail with Sleuth just going slightly mad driving around town. Um, yeah, I don't know why I find driving so frustrating. Somehow, you know, so I'm in my early 40s, I've managed to avoid a lot of driving in general because I've always lived in fairly large cities like London or Shanghai where there's just amazing public transport or, in the case of Shanghai, incredibly cheap, or obviously depending on your income, but incredibly affordable taxis. You know, the price of a taxi in Shanghai is less than the price of an underground ticket in London, for example. So it's only really when we came back from China and lived now in the suburbs of London that finally I'm having to drive and, yeah, I'm not enjoying it. At least not if you're doing it for a leisure thing like we did in our recent road trip around Europe. Well, enough of an introduction. Today is the approachable puzzle that you are promised every Tuesday. And um, I didn't post it on the, this usual Tuesday because it was Halloween and I think we needed to do something that is for that particular occasion. But this is what we have. We have a full deck and missing few cards puzzle with another highly approachable Sudoku variant. Now, the rule sets that we are continuing with seems to be Kropke dots. Essentially, I'm working through these puzzles in reverse chronological order. Reverse chronological? No, just chronological order. And um, there seems to be very much a focus on Kropke dots. I assume they're going to move on to a different rule variant in a bit, but this is clearly about making sure that this particular variant of a puzzle is very familiar with our viewers, I guess. So, following rule sets we have. Driving, uh, so, normal Sudoku rules applies, so that means the digits 1 to 9 in every row, in every column, and in every, excuse me, 3x3 three three box. Then it goes, standard Kropke dots apply. So, digits separated by a white dot differ by 1. For example, this 3 here has a white dot next to it. So this is either going to be 4 to be, you know, differ by 1, or 2 to differ by 1. But you can already tell which one it is, isn't it? Now, if we think about the 2, this can only be either, it's going to be in a 1 to 2 ratio because this is a black dot. So this is either going to be 1 or 4 because it has to be either 1 times 2 to get to 2, or 2 times 2 to get to 4. I think we can see from my very obvious example which one it will be, because there's only one digit common between them, and not repeated in the box. Now, one last rule we have is that not all possible dots are shown. So, welcome to Sudoku Variants. Good luck with the puzzle. Let me restart the clock and see how I get on. And given I've sort of pretty much spelt this out, this is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Can't be the 2 because we've already got this in box 1. Uh, box 5, we've got a 9. On the adjacent digit to a 9 can only be an 8. If I go with a 7, a is no longer available. This can only be a 6. If I go with a 5, this can now only be a 4 because the 6 is not available. 3, this can only be a 2 because... Um, the 4 is not available to be next to the 3. This is 1 or 3. We've got 3 in the column. So that's 1, that's 2, that's 3. Fairly straightforward. As soon as you place the 1, that can only be a 2. You've placed the 1 and the 2 in the box. This has to be a 3. And I'm sorry, I may actually have to take a pause here to walk my dogs who are pointing out that it's walk time, even though it's 5.30. I'll be right back. Please excuse the interruption. I'm just um, back from the walk and I'm just going to finish off this puzzle. So where were we? One, two, three. So this can only be four and eight because we already placed one and two, three, which would join the three, six. 
and now this is 4 8 this 4 tells us the order that's 4 that's 8 that can't be 3 that's got to be a 5 that can't have a 9 on it because the 8 is not available so that's a 9 this is 6 and 7 and this 6 tells us the order that's 6 that's 7 this 6 has a black crop key dot can only be a 3 this can't be a 4 we've got it in a column that's a 2 5 in here could be 4 or 6 and I can't see anything that's it's got to be a 4 because we can see this 4 and whatever this cell is are joined if that 6 are broken up because that would require a 5 in the row to be able to join 4, 5 and 6 so that's a 4 that's 3 or 5 we've already placed the 5 we just discussed that so that's the 3 what else do I have? Have I kind of done a lot of it, haven't I? Um, we've got an 8 in here because we've got a 2. This can't be a 2 or 8. This is 7 or 9. Both available. Oh, this puzzle is kind of not quite as straightforward as some of the previous puzzles we featured from Full Deck and Missing a Few Cards. You're actually having to pencil mark a bit. The 8 can only ever go with a 4. We can do a, a few of the 4s now. So that's the four. That's got to be two and three. This two tells us the order. That's three. Excuse me. Not, not two or three. Three and five. This three tells us the order. That's three. That's five. May as well think about twos. So nine, no, none of these are twos. That's the two. Although the fact that I've basically filled in every other cell in this row tells me that I've already known that. There's a one somewhere in here. Can't be on the black on the white crop key dot because the two is not available. So that's the one. So we have a continuous run, which unfortunately could be basically anything because all of the remaining digits are six, seven, eight, or nine, and they can all be basically placed here. This row needs six and nine. If I place a nine in here, I'd need an eight, which is not available. So that's the six. That's the nine. That's seven and eight. Any more crop key dots anywhere? Four, eight, three, six, all looking at this cell. This is one or two. If it's one, this is two. If this is two, can't be four, it's in the column. That's one. So that's a one, two pair. This three is either a two or a four. We've got a four in the box, it's got to be a two. You can see I'm sort of jumping around the grid here, really looking at all the crop key dots. More just to sort of make the Sudoku solution a bit easier. So you can see we've got a run of four digits in here. And we've got one, six, and seven in the column. So I know this is not nine, eight, seven, for example, because the seven is breaking it. So this is from two, three, four, and five. And um, I'm just going to sort of, I don't, I don't know if I really want to pencil mark all of it. You've got three, four, and five in the row. So this is definitely the two. Three, four, five. We've got two cells in here to finish it off, and they are indeed consecutive cells with six and seven. That means that this is a nine. Doesn't necessarily mean that's a seven. That's in a different box. We need an eight and something else to finish this box, a one. Any more crop key dots? By the looks of things, no. That's all of them. So we're basically down to Sudoku at this point. And I'm just sort of having a look around to see if there's anything I've not done. That's obvious. Ones. That's a one. There's a one in here. There's a one in there. You've got ones kind of forming what's called the next wing, meaning either this one is a one and this one is a one, or this one is a one, this one is a one. In either scenario, we've got a one on row nine, meaning this can't be the one, and that's two one. Let's continue with twos. That's the two. That's the last two. Threes. Got a, actually a one three pair now. Uh, actually, this three gives me the order. That's one, that's three, that's the one. And I'm resolving this X-wing. That's all the threes done, isn't it? Fours are almost all done. I think that's the last four in the grid. 
fives, that's the five, the six, may as well place it since I'm here. There is a five somewhere in this grid, it's five, may as well think about what this is. This is a seven, I need a six which can only be in here, and a nine. This can only be a six, this six resolves the six, seven. This is seven or nine, except the seven in the column tells us that's a nine, that's a seven, seven, not eight. This seven now bounces back down in here to give us a nine. An eight to finish box nine. We know what this cell is. It is a nine to finish the row. Got two things in here. Actually, may as well, I don't know, I said there were no more white crop kiddos, but there were clearly still some left. We know that this is six and seven. That's a six, that's a seven. I need an eight. And then to finish it all off, I need a five. And that's the solution to today's puzzle. Um, like I said, these puzzles are particularly approachable. So, you know, I hope that if you are new to su Sudoku variants, that you're finding these puzzles particularly interesting and that you can get tempted to actually solve some of the more difficult puzzles that are also featured on this channel. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Thank you, as always, for full deck and missing a few cards, for giving me the permission to feature them. And um, see you back for the next video. Bye for now.